You are watching the Field of 68. For the first time, our network brings you a live game broadcast as the Furman Paladins meet the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Welcome to the Greenville Winter Invitational, everybody. I'm John Fanta. He is Terrence Oglesby. The third member of our crew, Rob Douster, will join us in a few. We love college basketball. We know all of you love college basketball on the Field of 68 Media Network. So it is a privilege and a joy to bring you the first game broadcast on the Field of 68. What should we be watching for in this one? Two of the best mid-major teams in the country. Stephen F. Austin loves to get up in pressure. How's Furman going to handle that? Which team imposes their will is going to come out on top? It's just a matter of handling pressure for the Paladins. Stephen F. Austin, it's just helter-skelter. Make a mess of the game, and then you'll come out on top. In a battle of contrasting styles, there's veteran guard play on display. As we turn to our star watch, who are you eyeing? I'm looking at Nigel Hawkins, and Stephen F. Austin has a lot of guys that can make things happen with the basketball. Nigel Hawkins is arguably their best player offensively. He can attack the rim. He gets up in pressures, creates turnovers, and he can shoot it from the perimeter as well. He's one to keep an eye on. But for Fern, you look at Mike Bothwell averaging close to 20 points a game. He's that big physical guard that you need whenever you're playing against a team like Stephen F. Austin. Why? Because he's not going to turn it over. He can make something happen on his own, and he should have a big game if all goes according to plan for the Paladins. Bothwell, the leader of this program, a fifth-year guard. And in the first meeting ever between these two programs, it is great to be with all of you on the field of 68. This is part of the Greenville Winter Invitational. It is game two on the day. East Carolina defeated South Carolina earlier. Richmond and Clemson to come tonight. A brand new event to the college basketball calendar, and we are very excited to be a part of it. Well, it's showcasing South Carolina basketball, right? You have Clemson, South Carolina, and Furman, and then some excellent competition for all three. East Carolina, not necessarily pulling the upset, but a mid-major coming out on top in the first contest should make for a good matchup. I, in my opinion, John, this is the best game out of the three, the Furman against Stephen F. Austin, because it's going to be the fastest. It's going to have the most individual talent. Well, you think about these two programs, Bob Ritchie at the helm of the Paladins, Kyle Keller, the leader of the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. They both have such great respect for one another in preparing for each other's styles. What makes these two programs, Stephen F. Austin and Furman, successful? Well, it's their style of play. If you look at Furman offensively, they just have so many different options. You see J.P. Begees in your picture, Mike Bothwell, Ben Vanderwall, a guy that has come along, come into his own. Offensively, it's a lot of guys who can do a lot of different things. And Jalen Slauson, number 20 for the Dens, is a potential pro prospect in his own right. But if you look at Stephen F. Austin, it's the pressure. It's their mindset. It's how they attack every single game with intensity on the defensive end, they love turning defense into offense, and that's where they thrive, averaging over 80 points a game for the majority of Keller's career at the helm. Stephen F. Austin rides momentum into this one, folks. They're coming off of an overtime win over Louisiana Tech. 80 to 79, A.J. Kajus with a game winner, and there it is, Bob Ritchie, the leader of the Furman Paladins. He got them to the SoCon title game last year. They get beat at the buzzer by Chattanooga, but he has used that as fuel for his program. Well, that's one of the reasons he got those two guys to come back. Mike Bothwell and Jalen Slauson both decided, hey, that's going to add fuel to our fire. We're going to try to get this SoCon championship and move to the NCAA tournament. Our officials, Sidney Cohen, Jerome Hall, Bruce Benedict, Stephen F. Austin in the purple, led by Kyle Keller, Furman in the white. That's Kyle Keller, spent some time at Kansas, spent some time at Texas A&M, loves high pressure situations. You're gonna see Stephen F. Austin attack, attack, attack all day. Not overly complicated, but make up for a lot because they play so hard. With 10 on the shot clock. Ware pulls and a little short. And this is where Furman can get some opportunities early in the clock. Why? Because they're not going against a set defense. But this is where Stephen F. Austin, you look at them, how they attack defensively constantly in the passing lanes, how Furman handles that is going to determine this outcome. Isn't it beautiful, folks? On the Field of 68 Media Network, college basketball is live on your laptop, your iPhone, your iPad, wherever you're watching. Thanks for joining us.
Heen a little bit short on his first attempt and the rebound to the Lumberjacks. That's inside out basketball. Coach Keller talked to us earlier. Mr. Fanta, if they get post touches and they play inside out, we're going to have difficulties because we're undersized. Hall is unable to hit, defended well. And that was the big key that Kyle Keller said for us, too. He goes, we can't let Furman get inside the three-point arc. And you see it right away, creating opportunities. Inside out threes, J.P. Pegues. That's what they do, and that's Mike Bobbuck creating a shot for his teammate after getting to that charge circle and the defense collapsing. Pegues, a sophomore from Nashville, has taken that leap, and Bob Ritchie got on him after the game against NC State earlier this week. Furman coming up short to the Wolfpack, so this is about response today. Hawkins surveying. Now with 12 on the timer. Jostle and an elbow jumper. That falls home for Nana Antwi Boasioko. Pretty good, Fenton. Pretty good. If he's able to knock down that shot from about 15 feet out, that's going to improve their chances. Furman, wow, this ball is moving. Here, he ain't hitting the floor. Vanderwall gives it away and a foul on the Paladins. And that's tough. If you're Garrett Heen and you're going to catch a ball in the post, you're going to have to attack that catch. Ball goes to him on the baseline. You have to know Stephen F. Austin. They're going to swarm through the helpline. If you don't go to get, attack that catch, Stephen F. Austin's so fast, the Lumberjacks will get out and get some steals. Is notable first foul on Vanderwall that the freshman for Furman is getting the start. Making his first start in a Paladin uniform. Does a lot of good things. Isn't going to pop up on the score on the stat sheet, but just makes it happen. Aaron Heen forcing the turnover and a foul on the other end. This one on Nigel Hawkins. So when you're preparing for a team that forces over 21 turnovers per game in Stephen F. Austin, that's tops in America. How do you attempt to simulate all of that? Well, it's really difficult to simulate it in practice, but what you have to know is, is how they're creating those turnovers, and that's getting way up the line in the passing lanes and being aggressive, trying to get steals. So what happens is you have to attack individually. This is a great game for Mike Bothwell to take off and get into the paint and then kick. Because one thing we do know about the Lumberjacks is that defense, once they get in the paint, is going to collapse. It's a matter of making those one-on-one -on -one plays at the beginning of the clock. Individual plays breaking up team defense, and Furman can hit it from deep. They're averaging nine threes per game. Bothwell, nice kick, but it's an offensive foul. That's another thing, Bothwell, you get into the lane, you can't leave your feet. Coach Ritchie told us yesterday, John, you got to play off two. That's a jump stop situation. Stop your momentum and then make that pass. Lumberjacks, excellent job sliding over. Kajust taking the charge right after he checks into the ball game. Just underway in this one. Stephen F. Austin out of the whack. Team that expects to contend for a conference title this year. Sam Houston's made a lot of noise in that league. Now kick to Kajust. He had the game winner earlier this week, and he lights it up here. It's an excellent offensive possession, creating closeouts. Now look at this. This is where it gets difficult to play against him. Look at him get out in the pass lane, even towards half court. How about this defensive possession, Mr. Fanta, bringing the heat early and often. That's is Stephen F. Austin basketball to a T. A.J. Kajust forces the five seconds, and he's doing it all for this program right now. Snapped Louisiana Tech's 31-game home non-conference winning streak with a cold-blooded buzzer beater earlier this week. And they didn't have any timeouts left, so he just had to make something happen. But he's one of those junior college transfers that has been really good for Coach Keller early in the season. Hall. A blocking foul is called, and he'll head to the line. And that's a good call. Slauson needs to get over in front. Sedadrian Hall, he's a rim attack guy, right? Nice nice fake. You got to take that square in the chest, get all the way in front and correct defensive positioning. Good call by the referee. And I don't say that all that often, Mr. Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw a good call whistled against you in your entire life. I never saw a good call or a bad <laughs> shot. 
So here is Sedadrian Hall. We visited with him this morning at the hotel, and he was a joy to talk with. He talked about how he self-reflected early in this season because they're not used to taking losses, but he's trying to elevate everything he does. What stands out to you about his game? Well, it, his body has changed. He also talked about gaining 20 pounds in the offseason just to help him play the four position, and thank goodness he did because with all the injuries that the Lumberjacks have had in this early season, He's had to switch positions a little bit, but a crafty finisher around the rim, a local kid that's fairly close to campus, starts at ETSU and then goes to Stephen F. Austin, and boy, are they glad he did. Jostle from downtown, and they'll get a third opportunity here. Lumberjacks came ready to play. Turn around, a little bit long for Hall. Heen, they collapsed like you said they would defensively and it forced the giveaway. And if you're Garrett Heen, standing 6'9", 6'10". From downtown, that's a little bit short for Jossel. You have that ability to get into the lane, but you have to protect it because that defense comes quick. It's an evergreen light for Jalen Slauson. He's got range, too. And that was not the strong part of his game, John. It's more so getting into the lane and passing. He's a terrific passer, but his defensive ability is what stands out. But this season, when he's shooting the ball well, he just puts Furman on another level offensively. I told you Furman averages nine triples per game. Now Slauson with some defense. They played on now with 10 on the shot clock. Kajust. It's really been coming on for this program, but this time he threw it into the stands. And that was great defense by Garrett Heen hitting the guy on the roll. And we have a good ball game curling up. Furman up one here in the early going. holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright. Come in now and choose from a great selection of new Ford trucks and SUVs in stock and ready for delivery. Or place a custom order on select vehicles, lock in your rate, and you're protected. Plus, new inventory is arriving daily, so you can drive one home for the holidays. Lock in this low rate, plus make no payments for up to 90 days on a new 2022 Ford F-150. Choose from 6,000 trucks and SUVs, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the field of 68. Wellness Arena, Rob Dawson. I am joined by Jessica Ritchie, the wife of head coach Bob Ritchie. They might call her the queen of the Furman basketball program. Jessica, how are you doing? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So Jalen told us before the game that uh, it's Jessica Ritchie, Furman, Furman head coach Bob Ritchie's wife. Uh, Jalen told us before the game that Bob Ritchie, all he does, coach basketball and cook, doesn't have a life outside of it. Talk to me a little bit about Bob Ritchie's cooking excellence, his culinary expertise. Yeah, so there's basketball and there's cooking for Bob. Uh, so when we first met, I found out quickly that Bob was the better cook. Um, and so I actually brought a couple of things here with us. Some Tonys. So these are his cooking secrets. Some Tonys that he puts on all his meats and all his dishes. Um, and then also, I know you guys talked about steaks. So there's also his, the coffee rub that he uses um, on his steaks. So I know you guys talked about um, mayonnaise. No mayonnaise. No mayonnaise. <laughs> Just the coffee rub. No mayo on the steaks. You heard it from her first. So how does how does he balance? You know, you guys have three kids. You have a, an 11 month old, right? Just born. First of all, congratulations. How do you balance? that the, the coaching and the life of being a dad. Uh, so we actually homeschool our kids. They're in a university 
state model type school. Um, so that's very helpful because we just take it all on the road and we follow him around a lot. Um, and so he's great. I mean, when he's home, he's very, you know, into the kids, into their games. I don't think he missed one of our daughter's volleyball games at all this season, um, which says a lot. He's got a busy schedule, but he definitely, definitely puts his family first. Well, listen, guys, we're sending it back to you, Jessica. Thank you for being here with us. I'm going to let you go back and watch a game. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica Ritchie, for putting Rob Doster in his place. That's exactly right. <laughs> Mayo-based Doster. <laughs> Heen, a little bit short, and a foul is called on the Paladins. Back here courtside with you, John Fanta, Terrence Ogles, be the first ever game broadcast on the Field of 68 Network. And Furman out to a 10-5 lead. What are you seeing early? Well, just being aggressive towards the hoop, and whenever you're able to open that defense up and attack the basket early, that's when you can have some success. But Furman's not letting this game turn into a mess, right? If you're Stephen F. Austin, you want this game up and down, helter-skelter, turnovers on both sides. So far, Furman's able to rein everything in. And whenever they do turn the ball over, John, they've been dead ball turnovers. Furman, obviously, on a 7-0 run. Seven straight for the Paladins. And to your point, Stephen F. Austin is top 60 in the country in tempo. That's what they would like here. They don't want a half-court game. Now with eight on the shot clock, Jostle has to create. Entered inside with three. They get an extra opportunity, though. They've been strong on the glass, and they'll get a third. Few too many offensive rebounds if you're Furman. Stephen F. Austin attacking the glass and creating extra opportunities. Jostle attacks. He was shut down. The Dins have numbers. Bothwell all the way. What a start for Furman. Timeout Lumberjacks. Look at this. Mike Bothwell showing a little emotion. Furman off and running. We're down a little bit at going into the first media, bringing the energy defense into offense, John. A sharp start for the Paladins. Nine unanswered over the last three minutes. And it's a Stephen F. Austin team that, look, it has to be defensive offense by virtue of the way that they play. And you said it, Furman has been able to avoid that type of chaos thus far. Uh, that's exactly right. And defensively, Furman has impressed with their ability to guard the ball one-on-one. -on -one. That's their most important trait because you set off that chain reaction and that's when Stephen F. Austin is able to knock down shots. 0 of 8 in their last eight shot attempts is Stephen F. A. Stephen A. Austin. Excuse me. Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin. Stone Cold Stephen F. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> No, but defensively, they need to close out possessions, obviously, but still at the same time contesting everything. What's your middle name? Ronestad. Ronestad? It is. Terrence well, Ronestad Oglesby? That's me. That's my mother's maiden name. That is outstanding. You learn something new every day. That's how you get it done. Entered inside and a foul. That'll send Antwi Boasiaco to the line. Ball swinging from side to side. Second side offense. That defense is forced to rotate, and you're able to get a little high-low action. Wasn't it interesting? Talking this morning with Kyle Keller, he said, the easiest position to play on my team is the center position. Why is that? Well, they, he's a Bill Self guy, right? And we talk to Bill Self all the time, one of the most creative guys or creative coaches in the country finding creative ways to get post touches. Well, they do a lot of the same things as far as finding. You have to be a good layup maker. He's going to put you in those right spots. It's a matter of if you can knock down those four footers or not. And defensively, you just have to protect the rim. Tyrese Huey heads to the bench. He's got two fouls, so that presses Garrett Heen back into duty. To your point, Kyle Keller. A Bill South disciple, an Eddie Sutton disciple. He looks up to Coach Sutton, the Hall of Famer. And he talked about his mentors with us this morning. He has led this Stephen F. Austin program the last seven years to some terrific heights. Great ball movement. It ends up in the hands of Bothwell. And what started that? Bothwell getting into the paint and playing off two feet. Coach Ritchie emphasized that to us. Play off two feet, make those passes, and then you're going to be able to find open teammates. Joe Anderson with the dish. 
juice to shifty with that basketball. That's picked off by Slauson. We told you about tempo. It's the Paladins who have come out dictating it. An 11 1 run by Furman. And here, here we come back to making individual plays. Get past that first line of defense and let the ball work for you. Mike Bothwell. A little bit long. And back to the Lumberjacks it goes. We've got a timeout. The first ever game broadcast on the Field of 68 Network. We're just getting started in Greenville. The Dins up eight. Furman has transformed the educational experience to be different, to have a distinct and purposeful pathway of opportunity, access, and resources. It's the opportunity to engage in real-world, hands-on experiences, such as study away, research, and internships. It's access to world-class faculty and four impactful institutes. It's the resources available to help you understand your strengths and how they fit into the world. It's the deep sense of community surrounded by pure beauty. Furman sets the foundation for your life. Find your advantage at Furman. This is no sleepy-headed, moving-in-reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. When you buy a diamond from Hales, you're getting us. We know what it means to see a smile, to see that reaction when you get that engagement ring. And we take great pride in that stone being absolutely the most beautiful diamond it possibly could be. It's about the smile that it creates when someone opens that box. We've put our life and our soul in picking that diamond, especially for you. to a 14-6 lead on Stephen F. Boston right here on the field of 68 in our inaugural game on the network. We welcome in the founder of the field of 68 and our sideline reporter, Bobby D. Rob Doster. John, I could not be more excited to be here. Hopefully this is the first of many events that we're able to do and many games that we're able to broadcast. I don't know if we could have found a better city to be able to do this in Greenville. I didn't know much about it before we came down here. We had a great time last night. We had an unbelievable meal at Halls. One of the best steaks I ever had. I didn't even need to put mayo on it, John. <laughs> <laughs> Big development over there for Rob Doster. Yes. Big development. No mayo on his steaks. No, no mayo on his steaks. We did go to Halls. Greenville is a fantastic area of the country and that downtown area John I was taking you through it right oh. Main Street unbelievable place yes it's awesome food the nicest of people I saw Santa this morning with the tree tons of folks out and about it's really a great area here in Greenville and Santa was on a Harley he was that's and how you know you're a little further south absolutely is this the, the chicken right here absolutely was Stephen F. Austin trying to snap out of it. They're 2 of 12 from the field. Hawkins with eight. Nigel Hawkins defended by Anderson. I mean, we made a lot about Stephen F. Austin's defensive ability in at the beginning of the game, but it's been Furman's ability to swarm to the ball and keep it out of the paint that's really kind of turned this game on its head so far. I want to get your thought process on the SOCON. Furman was picked as the favorite in this league. There's a couple of notable teams between Jake Stevens and Chattanooga who have caught fire. You've got Sanford who, and UNCG, both factors. What do you make of this conference this year? I think it's those top four teams. You have Furman, Chattanooga, UNCG, and obviously Sanford. I, I mean, Bucky Ball down at Sanford. He's got Quez Glover, Florida transfer, really, really good. Jake Stevens could very well be the Lou Henson mid-major player of the year. His numbers are astronomical to this point. He's probably the best shooting 6'10", 5 man in the country. This league, John, as far as coaching is concerned, as far as talent is concerned, I mean, from an individual basis, there's dudes in this league. No question about that. And that's what has led 
the SOCON to getting national attention because the winner of this league can wear Cinderella's slipper in the NCAA tournament. That's a nice offensive possession. The Lumberjacks getting inside out. They had that opportunity. Roddy Ware just not able to knock it through. But that's a good shot after several possessions of not so good shots. Five offensive rebounds for the Lumberjacks to none for the Paladins. Now five on the shot clock, though. It's Hawkins dishing it off to Ware. Another stop for Furman. Here's Anderson. He lost the basketball. Maybe this is what can get the Lumberjacks going. Hawkins stepping through. They will not count it. It's on the floor. Wow, I'm not sure about that call, John. I thought that was a heck of a finish. Nigel Hawkins gets his feet taken out from under and still able to convert. They're going to call it on the floor. Mr. Hawkins, one, two. I mean, the NBA, that's a continuation. I'm not sure I wouldn't give it to him here either. It's the tough balance between what is and what isn't. However, I'm not in the least bit surprised that they had this on the floor. The other side, though, is it's the seventh team foul on Furman. So Hawkins goes to the line anyways for a one and one. Furman already in the penalty here. Early in the half, it talks about how physical they've been in the early going. You said what is and what isn't. That isn't a good call. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> Jeez, you have come out swinging in Greenville. <laughs> I feel comfortable in this gym. <laughs> There's not a gym that you haven't felt comfortable in. That, there, that is a fact. That's, that's the truth. I like Hawkins' ability, though. He has that guy. He has that spurt ability for this Lumberjack team to get hot in a hurry. The nephew of 76ers great Eric Snow. There's that. Comes from a family of basketball. And goes two for two. His father played as well. And despite Stephen F. Austin starting two for 15, this is a six-point game. Pegues with 10 on the timer. Pegues, sophomore, he's taking a big leap for this program, gives it off to Slauson. Slauson with two, and a stop for the Lumberjacks. That's one Slauson needs to tear the rim off. You cut to the basket, you have some momentum, you need to go up and finish strong. But Coach Ritchie, he told us prior to the game, John, we could draw up all we want, and it still might not matter. Hawkins a little off, but an offensive rebound for Bilasienko. Hawkins, they just haven't had it. Great pass. To the corner. All three of these for Ben Vanderwall. We know Stephen F. Austin likes to play fast. Furman does too. Getting out in the open floor, Ben Vanderwall, the freshman, running to the corner. Nice pass, J.P. Pegues, seeing in the open floor. Hawkins answers. Well, that was one of the things that Bob Ritchie talked with us about with Vanderwall. He said a lot of freshmen come in, they think, we, I got to score to stay on the floor as Bothwell connects. Wow. But what Vanderwall does well is he just has feel for the game. He doesn't need the ball to contribute. That's impressive from a first year. Well, so many coaches talk about whenever guys get to college, they have to do winning stuff, right? Vanderwall does winning stuff. It doesn't need the ball to be a factor, and that's such a change of pace for a lot of freshmen who are typically the best players on their team. Wow. Fancy, you were open, <laughs> and he saw you running the floor right there. I'm open. <laughs> a giveaway, a dead ball one at that. You think about it. You were reading up on Stephen F. Austin going into this game, and we have a group text talking through storylines. And what did you say about the Lumberjack style, that it's like an inverted, it's basketball inverted? It's, a, it's amazing. It's, yeah, they, they try to invert the game a little bit. Seven offensive rebound. Furman actually has seven turnovers. That's crazy. And they're up and, by nine. That's right. <laughs> and their ability to get out and run. Now, the majority of those turnovers have been dead ball turnovers. So they can get back and set their defense. And to be honest with you, John, I think they're playing pretty good defense here in the early going, and they're moving the ball really well. Foster, it's a blocking foul. And you see when Stephen F. Austin gets back in the half court, Furman has a real hard time moving the basketball. Coach Keller talked to us before the game about, hey, we're trying our best 
to make sure it's a low assist game for Furman. If that's the case, we have a chance. If Furman's peppering that ball around the perimeter and finding shots, it's going to be tough. There's another from downtown, Marcus Foster. And the Dins are dominating through 12 minutes. Timeout, Lumberjacks. Off of baseline, out of bounds. Foster able to knock it through. They're up 12 here in Greenville, Furman, and Stephen F. Alston. It's bow time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bo's chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender, even a chicken wants to eat it. Why do people are trying to eat? With dozens of outstanding hotels, hundreds of mouth-watering restaurants, and thousands of people who will genuinely be happy to see you. Here you go. It's no wonder that even in winter, Greenville, South Carolina is one of the warmest places in the world. Come savor the sights, the sounds, and the smiles of Greenville. Come visit this winter. So we are back, and I've delivered this delicious Sobeys fried chicken, a staple in Greenville, South Carolina for the last 25 years. Visit Greenville SC, and they gave me this sauce. I don't know what this sauce is, guys, but apparently it's something that's supposed to be really good. So wait, I'm going to have to test this thing out. Hold on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. A little kick to it, a little spicy, kind oh, of sweet. Yeah. You guys might need to cut to somebody else. I'm, I'm busy here eating this chicken. Sobeys fried chicken. Well, you're eating the chicken with just the breading. Okay, that's I tried not to get how the we do off. things on here. the field of 68. You just, you just took the breading. Let's show go. you how it's really done. Sobeys New South Cuisine. There you you go. can't just pull out a piece of the breading. You need to dive into the bird. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? It's outstanding. I think we're going to check to see if Vanderwall was behind the three-point line, but it's hard for me to focus right now, fellas. Yeah, no, you can't give us fried chicken and expect us to go to a review. What, how, we got to time that a little bit better. We need to talk to these officials. The official is telling us what's going on. I'm sorry, but I'm having fried chicken. <laughs> so right now it's secondary to whatever you're telling us. Was it a four-pointer? No, it was an eight-pointer. It was an eight-pointer. Yeah. <laughs> the first ever eight-pointer on the field of 68. What? What's the final call? They don't have a view from the other side. They don't have a clear view. Folks. We have a top. There we have a top. It looks like. It does look like his toe's on the line. Zoom on that. You'd be right, Rob. Yeah, can we zoom on that, guys, in the back? We're trying to be as good of an assistant as we can. No, we do not have zoom. It looks like that the foot is on that white line. That's what it looks like here. We're going to play it back for the officiating crew. One I'm going to let look. you guys take away with this while I sit here and dig into this chicken. Chicken is good. It's tough, conclusive. Tough to now, tell that. now let, let's say this. Let's say this, John. It does have to be conclusive evidence that it could be a two or a three. <laughs> How is it, John? It's great. It's great. <laughs> And Sobey's fried chicken is greater than a two versus a three. Thank you, sir. There we go. Thank there you. we go. I got you. <laughs> Look at Rob. Rob I, was I went smart. the smart way. You got you to tuck the, uh, no. the napkin in the shirt to protect the suit, right? I'm trying to look good over here, guys. Well, so I am making a mess all over my table, though. I have nothing but crumbs in front of me. You're wearing a suit for what? The first time in how many years? First time in probably two and a half, maybe three years. <laughs> right, Pre-COVID. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. I've had too much fried chicken since then because it's a little bit snug right now. That's Just don't, right. don't flex too hard. You might split the back of it. Yeah, I got to be careful when I sit down. That's a result of the mayonnaise-based steaks you've been uh, <laughs> engulfing. So they're, they're still reviewing this. Your thought is inconclusive? It's inconclusive at this point. Yep, we're going to count it to three, and we're going to keep it moving. Rob Doster just going to town over there, and so is Fanta hasn't stopped, guys. 
He's and hungry. How could you? How could you? The, Honestly, man, the man needed a snack. Can we get him like a wet wipe over there? I got him. I got him. Honestly, it might be the best monitor <laughs> review in the history of college basketball because it gave us three minutes to just Hey, eat. did you guys try the sauce? No one else tried the dipping sauce? They poured it on. They poured it on. They poured it on for you? All right. So, hey, Greenville, great food in this town. Yes. And it's not just Sobeys. It's not just Halls. There's a lot of different places. And we want to thank Sobeys for dropping off some fried chicken. They're located on Main Street and visit Greenville. Greenville, South Carolina, who has arranged some more surprises for us throughout the day. John Fanta, <laughs> Terrence Oglesby, Rob Dowster with you from the Greenville Winter Invitational, the first ever. Hall was denied by two Paladins. Wow. Is that How the about first Gary time you ever filmed someone eating fried chicken? <laughs> How about, the, how about the double team coming from the back? Whoa, what a pass! Mr. Fanta! Who hand wham! My goodness, Mike Bothwell with eyes in the back of his head. Furman up 14, playing high-level basketball. Garrett Heen with two hands, and the Paladins are making quite the statement. Wow, Furman just clicking on all cylinders right now. Defensively, offensively. Kajus can't hit. Stephen F. Austin, folks, is three for 22. And a foul is called. It's been Furman getting out and running, pushing the pace. Mike Bothwell, though. We talk about his scoring ability, over 20 points, or 19.7 points a game right at 20. But it's the vision that he's displayed here in the early going. So Vanderwall heads to the line for the Paladins. Freshman from Elmhurst, Illinois. And this shows you the kind of player he is. Vanderwall posted a plus 15 earlier this week against NC State. How many times you see a plus 15 in a double digit loss to a Wolfpack team and a plus 15 from a freshman? Statistical anomaly. Yes. If you will. My thing is, maybe Coach Richie should have played him more. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hear about that. Oh, I'm definitely going to hear about that. <laughs> I mean, co constantly looking for that five man. You have to keep your balance. You have to maintain your low base. Garrett Heen is working his tail off defensively. Stephen F. Austin tries to seal up the lane and create some of those over-the-top opportunities. Furman just staying consistent with their defensive pressure. Travel on Lasiaco. And back to the Paladins it goes. They're on an 8-0 run have taken control of this game, and it hasn't come from just one source. This is perfect offense for another jam. Slauson gets in on the party, and Stephen F. Austin is down to one timeout left in this game. I love the draw up. You play, overplaying the passing lanes, fake it, go back door, and you get the flush, Mr. Slauson. Using their aggressiveness against them, Jalen Slauson, if there's one thing he can do, it's that. But they're trying to deny the passing lanes. Go back door, give it to your best athlete. He's rocking the rim, Mr. Fanta. There's an NIL deal waiting to happen for Jalen Slauson because Sobeys could get in that with the fried chicken served with a side of Slauson slaw. Slaw dash son. That'd be big time. That's what we're talking Come about. Come on, Sobeys, what are we doing? A 17-point lead for Furman. Let's throw it back over to Rob. Yeah, we were talking about this a little bit before um, before the game started, but Jalen Slauson is a guy I spoke to an NBA scout um, before this game that has a real chance to, uh, if not get drafted late in the second round, probably end up as a two-way player. I, I know that you think he is a jumper away from being a guy that's a role player at the next level, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he presents that size and physicality at 6'8", 215, 220 pounds, and he moves his feet really well. Last year's SoCon Defensive Player of the Year, he fits that description of a multi-positional defender. That is the term with NBA teams right now. You're, you're the shooting expert. Breakdown is the, his, his stroke. His it's release. a little mechanical. He's going to have to clean a couple of things up. It's a high release, but guys, he can do that. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. That is a hard fall for Heen. He's wincing in some pain. 
And that hurt. I mean, there was nothing catching him. And that's tough. I think Heen's going to be okay. Oh, tough kid. But how about the pass? Slawson on the back door. And that's just an unfortunate fall. That's Nothing from Day Day Hall intentional going up and trying to contest, but that's a nice cut by Heen. But that shows the offensive versatility of Jalen Slauson, the ability to handle the ball in the open court, find guys on passes. Heen, a little unfortunate. But up and at the line. Was good. He's been a real X factor yeah. <laughs> for the Paladins, <laughs> averaging 12 points and five rebounds per game it's, over it's so the last six. Yeah, no, it's, a mean, team it's, high 20 it's, points it's, against South yeah. Carolina as well for Garrett Heath. Well, he does things more outside in. I mean, he stands 6'10". He has the ability to handle a little bit. How you did things. How's that? Outside in. That's <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there was all outside. There was no. There was no end. There was no end. There was no. I let Trevor Booker do all the inside, and Tanner Smith, who's <laughs> an assistant on Stephen F. Austin's coaching staff, I let him do all that stuff. I stayed on the perimeter. But he's kind of an X factor at that five position. Nice move by Heyman. The Lumberjacks needed it. Garen Heen, kind of an X factor. Somebody who could. You know, bring it some added scoring punch from the perimeter and as a passer. And three short, and maybe this can creep the door open for Stephen F. Austin to get back in this game. We have not seen them put in consecutive buckets, and it's not going to happen here. Here's Bothwell off the steal. Bothwell. Oh, oh a putback slam! It's a Slauson Saturday in Greenville! Holy smokes, James! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Slauson, how do you do, sir? What about the attack? Mike Bothwell, there is no stop and play. I think everybody's a little shocked. The up misses it. Watch your head, sir. And the stare down, John Fanta. <laughs> he is all sorts of fun. Hawkins answers. Look at the pace. Foster, he's fouled by Hall. But that opening on the backside, that happened because Slauson's running hard, right? You take up that middle, you rim run, and then that backside's going to be open. Foster needs to get down there and get his feet set, ready to shoot. But it's been a firm and show so far. Wow, here it is. The up, the down, the stare. <laughs> Jalen Slauson. His father played basketball at the Citadel. His cousin RJ played at South Carolina, and Bob Ritchie has said as Bothwell finishes. And is that really the case? Kyle Keller just used his final timeout with 4.48 left in the first half. I don't think I've ever seen that in a college basketball game. A coach out of timeouts. 15 minutes and 12 seconds into the game. He's obviously not ha happy with the refereeing, but that was just a good out-of-bounds play off the baseline and curl and finish by Bothwell. Overall, I mean, Furman just playing at a really high level and moving the basketball. Back over to Rob. So Jalen Slauson, part of the reason that he actually committed to Furman was on his recruiting visit. Bob Ritchie, we talked about the steaks, cooked a mistake with the coffee, uh, the coffee rub that his wife actually gave me earlier. That was part of what got him here. But the other part of it was that uh, when Jalen um, sat down his, his recruiting visit, they didn't pitch him on playing time. They didn't pitch him on all that. They pitched him on all the right things. Uh, and his dad was actually the one that made Jalen uh, commit. We're going to take a break. It's been all Furman. Jalen Slauson has been fantastic. We're actually going to stay here and not go to break. John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby with you. Well, when you have a coach use four timeouts and a half. I've never seen it either. That does get a timeout coordinator a little bit twisted up. So we'll absolutely say to a TOC, we don't envy their job today because Terrence, the Lumberjacks don't have a TO for the remainder of the game. For the rest of the game. Now you just got to let your guys play. No matter how it goes for the duration. 
And now if you're firm and you have to feel great about where you're at, obviously. Up 19, little less than five minutes to play. You're getting whatever you want. But this is a Stephen F. Austin team. They've they've come back from these deficits, right? They are a team with the way they play. That's the thing. Some teams, it's impossible to come back when you fall by 19 in a game. But because of the way they play, things can happen quickly. Oh, it's such a hel helter-skelter pace. Right? And it's all based on effort. If they're able to create turnovers quickly, they can rank up six to eight points in a hurry. Oh, wow. Oh, nice crossover by Anderson. A dish off to Bothwell. Foster. Kicks. Huey, a little bit off, but a foul. And that's the kind of day it's been for the Lumberjacks. Offensive opportunity, you have to get in somebody like Slauson, you have to get in his legs. If you're undersized, and the Lumberjacks are missing some pieces in this game. You have to get in his legs and then root him out, especially an athlete of his caliber. So Slauson at the line. And to go a step further, last year in a feature with the local paper, Bob Ritchie said that God created a special person in Jalen Slauson because he's got it all, not just in the way that he plays, but in the fact that he always is doing something to impact winning, even beyond the basketball court for our team. Well, we talk about what can you do without the basketball? Mm -hmm. I mean, Slauson's another example of that. And Bob Ritchie, who just has that ability to attract and recruit those kind of guys. You see the freshman class, Ben Vanderwall. Yep. I mean, just another guy. And maybe the best example, the best representation of Slauson is that he's the reigning SOCON Defensive Player of the Year. Dossel serving, trying to find Basioko, and he does. Basioko drives and scores. John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby, Rob Doster with you. The first ever game broadcast on the field of 68. Marcus Foster will head to the line and shoot free throws after our timeout. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? A multifaceted stone of remarkable strength formed under intense pressure to shine brighter than all the rest. Hard edges, clean lines, with a fire inside. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? Ingalls, proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. grill for one hot dog seriously hot dogs better with pepsi <sighs> health suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever but at bon secours your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you because whether here or from home we believe your health care should always revolve around you bon secours primary care for the universe of you visit bonsecour.com to make an appointment this is mountain dew a rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. Oh, families out and about today at Fon Secours Wellness Arena for the first ever Greenville Winter Invitational. John Fanta, Terrence Ogilvie, Rob Doster back here with you on the field of 68. Our score late in this first half, Furman 35. Stephen F. Austin, 16, T.O. What's been the difference in this game? Uh, the defensive intensity. Every shot that Stephen F. Austin has taken has been difficult. Furman swarming to the basketball, and they're the team, ironically enough, turning defense into offense. And Rob, I don't know if you has a, have a visual over here, but every timeout and every media timeout, that chicken just that chicken bucket just gets lower and lower and lower. I'm doing the same thing, T.O. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. 
by halftime around here, they're going to address me as Colonel. There you go. The new Colonel's in town, Greenville. That's exactly right. A 20-point game. And you think about it, too, with Furman. You could tell there was frustration in Bob Ritchie's voice because he felt like they could have had a better showing against NC State. Just turnovers early. And, and let's keep in mind, too, John, NC State, if that team gets rolling, there's a lot of mm -hmm. individual talent there, right? Traquavia Smith, Jarkel Joyner is a perfect fit for what Kevin Keats likes to do. And it can snowball, but Furman has that ability, too, as evidenced by today. I'm just so impressed. Off the ball, Furman has been terrific. And as soon as I say something, Stephen F. Austin gets a layup. It's Nigel Hawkins who has eight. You can't take the ACC out of a man. You can't. It's here to stay. Bothwell swishes it home. He's got a Baker's dozen. Nine assists for this Furman team before the halftime break. Moving the ball and playing fast. Sometimes whenever you play a fast team that likes to get up in pressure and likes to play fast offensively, sometimes they struggle getting back. And a nice over the top, help side a little bit late. That's Joe Anderson. Needs to be more alert off the ball. Siako with the slam and steps. A travel and you think about it here with 2.25 to go. Look at that Stephen F. Austin bench. You would never know what the score of the game is. Well, that's right. They're still in the game, but the, the most impressive, or not impressive, but the tough part about that bench is there's four guys in sweatsuits that should be playing. Yep. They have been battered by injuries this season, down to basically seven or so players for the majority of the slate. A six and four record that's abnormal for this program. They've won more games than any other program in the state of Texas in the last decade. And the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks. Boasiaco, a little bit long, back over to Rob. Is that they are not going to be seeding their conference tournament based off of conference record. They're doing it based off of the formula that's going to include things like Ken Palm and things like the net rating, which means that Stephen F. Austin, in theory, because of the struggles they've had with injuries at the start of the season, could end up winning the league regular season title and end up as a three or a four seed in the conference tournament. Really is interesting to see that new formula that the WAC is using. Thank you, Rob, for that. And it's just been that type of year for Stephen F. Austin from an injury perspective because Jalen Jackson Posey has been down for them. Robbie Ambrewster, who was a Houston transfer as well. And Jaleel Bobroon also hurt. So they've, they've been a shorthanded team this season. And as a result, had to play more on the perimeter. Well, they're playing guards at the four spot. Yeah. Tough. That is tough. Hawkins. Hawkins pulls. Another offensive rebound. That's been their strength in this first half. They're just not getting anything out of it. I mean, that's the big part. If you're getting an offensive rebound, sometimes that's the best time to spray out and get three-point opportunities. This is a Stephen F. Austin team that can get hot from the perimeter. Get that offensive rebound and guys position around the perimeter, and you can find some open shots that way in a game where you've struggled finding open shots. Playing guards at the four is like putting you in Iowa. It just doesn't make sense. Slauson with the right hand. I bet people in Iowa like mayonnaise on their steaks. Well, they hate you. <laughs> There's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Final minute of a first half that's been dominated by the Paladins. Impressive first half all around. I mean, switching defenses, maintaining pressure on the ball. Help side's been active. Oh, picked off by Heen. Seven Lumberjacks turnover. Bothwell, he is special, folks. If you don't know about Mike Bothwell, you sure do now. Big time finisher in transition. So strong with its upper body and physically able to finish. And now we're going to trap a little bit coming into the half. And Bothwell firing up the crowd. The trap ends up in a bucket with 13 seconds left in the first half for Davion Scott. I don't know if J.P. Pegues knows the clock is going down. Pegues with five. Now he knows it. Pegues crosses over. Pegues. And that'll do it.
for the opening 20 minutes. Furman doubling up Stephen F. Austin. Dominating basketball all the way around. Stephen F. Austin struggling to get things going offensively, but Furman out and running, playing their own game, playing in transition and finishing strong. Been consistent all day. The Paladins rolling after 20 minutes. Mike Bothwell with 15. Jalen Slauson with 11. Let's send it over to Rock. I got Bob Ritchie, head coach of the Furman Paladins here. You give up 22 points in the first half. Not exactly known for your defensive effort. What did what, you see from them? Doing a good job getting back and uh, just doing a better job guarding the ball. They're really trying to post us and they're, they're getting physical down there with us. We got to make sure we continue to fight for our fronts and make sure we keep the paint, you know, more restricted. But we've done a much better job here so far. Stephen F. Austin is the kind of team that can make a run in the second half. How do you keep you guys focused with a big lead? Yeah, we got to come out and play harder than we just did. And we know how good of a program and how good of a co how well coach they are. We got to maintain focus and keep our urgency high. Thanks, Bob. Furman shot 16 for 24 in the first half, 67%. And the Paladins defense was in shutdown mode. As Rob and Bob Ritchie just brought up. We're at the half and have plenty to come from the Greenville Winter Invitational. You're watching the Field of 68. Furman has transformed the educational experience to be different, to have a distinct and purposeful pathway of opportunity, access, and resources. It's the opportunity to engage in real-world, hands-on experiences, such as study away, research, and internships. It's access to world-class faculty and four impactful institutes. It's the resources available to help you understand your strengths and how they fit into the world. It's the deep sense of community surrounded by pure beauty. Furman sets the foundation for your life. Find your advantage at Furman. It's good! He could go all the way! Yeah! At Ingalls, we're proud to partner with area athletics from Little League to the pros, college tournaments to high school heroes. It's all in the bag. You ready? Hold on, let me check the score. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. It's boat time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bose chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender. Even a chicken wants to eat it. Why do people are trying to eat? Jewelry has always been the most powerful gift of love, whether it's an engagement or an anniversary. Here at Hales, we're in the business of celebrating your life's most special moments from the past, the present, and the future. Being Greenville's oldest business means we understand you are only as good as how you feel when you leave the store. We welcome you to visit our flagship jewelry store. Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the field of 68. Stephen at Boston Furman in Greenville. One of the nicest places to play um, for us. You know, we don't get to play in big arenas like that. So it's going to be very fun to be in there. And it's going to have a very big high major feel for us, which is which is cool. You go into every season with high expectations, especially uh, with Coach Ritchie. You know, he's pushing for greatness every day. Bob Ritchie, obviously you guys lost a, a tough one last year in the SoCon Championship game with Chattanooga. This is going to make us better, and, and this is going to be something that's not going to define us. I just didn't want—I just didn't want that to be my last memory as a paladin. 
if that shot didn't ever happen, the places we're going to go this season, we'll never be able to get to if that shot did go in. Why not run it back in a place that I love and a place that loves me? You're playing against one of the best mid-major programs today in Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Kyle Keller's done a great job there. Well, obviously, they're one of the best mid-majors in the country. You know, I think it helps us prepare, you know, for league play. You know, we need to play those kind of games. I think basketball deserves it. I just think the more challenges we see, the more we're going to find out about our group. I, I think that there's a lot of opportunities for mid-major basketball to continue to rise and potentially, just like in this game, get the national media audience. If we play, we increase the platform to where now all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, because currently, if you just go play people that you feel like you can beat at home, and then you go get bought on high majors home courts, well, how are we really going to increase the platform? Those teams need to play as much as they can to prove that they're quality and safe tournament level teams. That's an opportunity for the mid-major brand to be elevated on that particular day with that particular game. Greenville is a really nice place. It's definitely a growing city. Everyone tells me Halls is the place that I have to check out. Is that right? Halls is definitely uh, the best steakhouse for sure. I like I like a ribeye. You know, the if you really want to go big time, you go get the, the tomahawk. You know, it's about the size of probably both our heads put together. Um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pay for what you get. Well, we just got to make sure that Jeff Cody picks up the tab then. <laughs> you got to make him pick up the tab and be all good. Jalen's jumping in right now. You can exit out if you want. I'm going to tell him that uh, that, that you just said you're going to beat him in uh, in one-on-one to 11. There right. he is. I told him I'll beat you in one-on-one. Yeah, he's out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're a South Carolina kid, right? I've heard a lot about Greenville. What's the benefits of Charleston versus the benefits of Greenville? They have a lot of similarities, actually. I'm always going with the hometown. The hometown is going to be the number one. I've heard a lot about halls. I need a I need another spot, right? I need like a lunch spot, a breakfast spot. Where 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 are the good places to go when I'm in Greenville? If you're into soul food, um, there's this place called M and J's. It's like a little hole in the wall spot, but it's so good. Um, that's actually closer to downtown. It's in West Greenville, so it's closer to downtown. If, if it's soul food and barbecue, the, the more run down the building looks, the, the better it's gonna be, right? Like if it's a hole in the wall, you want it, like that, that's what you want for a barbecue and a soul food. After you go to the barbecue spot, how much conditioning do you have to do the next day to work it all off? Uh, well, <laughs> Richie's a really big barbecue guy, so if you bring him some there good you go. barbecue, you're probably in his, his good graces. He's a, he's a really good cook too. Um, Part of how he got me here, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> what did he make for you? What was it? He made a, a steak with some coffee grounds on top of it. It's really good. We're finding out new things every day about Bob Ritchie here, the, uh, the chef. We got to get him on Top Chef. That's what we have to do. If you're looking for the right school, look beyond the numbers. You'll find a university that's ready to welcome you with open arms. You'll find SFA. Opportunity is always in bloom. You'll get to perform research alongside faculty members. And we never miss a chance to show off our lumberjack spirit! Woo! SFA is committed to providing truly transformational experiences. Oh, and one more thing. Ask some Jack. Are you kidding me? Is that for me? How? Oh, I can't wait to see what you got your mother. <laughs> the BMW Road Home Sales Event. On now. Receive a credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through January 3rd. With dozens of outstanding hotels, hundreds of mouth-watering restaurants, and thousands of people who will genuinely be happy to see you. Here you go. It's no wonder that even in winter, Greenville, South Carolina is one of the warmest places in the world. Come savor the sights, the sounds, and the smiles of Greenville. Come visit this winter. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. 
and we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright. Come in now and choose from a great selection of new Ford trucks and SUVs. In stock and ready for delivery. Or place a custom order on select vehicles, lock in your rate, and you're protected. Plus, new inventory is arriving daily, so you can drive one home for the holidays. Lock in this low rate, plus make no payments for up to 90 days on a new 2022 Ford F-150. Choose from 6,000 trucks and SUVs, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Welcome back. Welcome back to Bon Secor Wellness Arena. 44-22, Furman is up on Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Rob Doster here. I have been given more food from Grill Marks. They have shakes right here, strawberry shakes. And I've been given, look at this. Look at this plate of cheese fries with bacon and sour cream on it. I mean, how am I, how am I supposed to stay in shape, right? I'm trying to get in shape before the holidays. How am I supposed to do this with all this food being given to me? Like, Fanta, you go ahead. You talk, because i got to eat, man. The, the suit was already tight. Yeah, the suit was already tight, Goster, so you be careful. But look, we, we have some stuff going on. You're not going on a holiday diet in Greenville. This is Grill Marks. After They're Greenville, Fanta. Man. Greenville, South Carolina. They have oh, brought come us on. sliders. Come on. Twelve of them. What are we doing? That is fantastic. My cholesterol's through the roof just looking at this. This is amazing. Do not see your doctor. I'm not going to see Don't my doctor. Don't see your doctor. Wow, unbelievable. Because I'm sure it's second after this. How come wow. you guys got the slide? Can I get us some sliders? Can you send one over here for me? Can what do you got? You got can, a, can that suit handle it? Yeah, it can, man. It's, it's stretchy. I got stretchy pants on. You know? oh, okay, there yeah, you go. I got there stretchy go. pants You're on. You're a French fries guy. Over here, we I am have, a fries guy. That is true. You have the beef. All yeah, right. well, see, here's the thing. I got, wow. like, the bacon and the cheese on this. this I'm gonna, yeah, like, there you go, T.O. Get in there, T.O. Get in there, T.O. I don't know what this is, but it looks amazing. <laughs> How is that, Fanta? Can we get it? There you go. Like everywhere. Yeah. Spicy. What kind is that? So that one is the, uh, so you got the hot honey chicken right here. That's the Greenville hot honey chick. And then let me see. Oh, that's the uh, El Gringo right there. It's Don't got a chorizo me. patty and a oh. ground beef patty. The El Gringo. Hey, did you a guys try the milkshake yet? And a ground beef patty. By the way, Grill Marks, downtown Greenville. Get there. Milkshake, I'm going to try right now again. Oh. Yeah, give it a... Give it a try, man. It's got some strawberries on the top. This is great. This is great. I could do this wow. every day. This is the best I could do this assignment. every day. It's the best assignment we've ever got. Oh, yeah. no I don't think I've ever been served food at halftime. No. But only the hospitality <laughs> here's, of Greenville. Here's That's what we do know. with the field of 68, T.O. That's what we do. We eat and we watch college basketball. Here's when you know that I'm living <laughs> the American dream. There's been more meals served than halves played. <laughs> We've got some food to consume. Second half between the Dins and Stephen F. Austin to come. <laughs> Did you know that Ingalls sells more organics than any other store? Or that they run their own dairy? Or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Did you know that they have more local craft beer than any place else? Or that they have energy smart stores? Or that they professionally slice and package imported cheese from Europe? Did you know about their giant international aisle, local farm partnerships, curbside pickup, wine department? Or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. It's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Nachos, better with Pepsi. This is no sleepy-headed, moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. You 
fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the field of 68. We've gained more pounds in this game broadcast than Kyle Keller has timeouts left, which would be none. That's saying a lot. Because it's a 22-point game. Furman is up 44 to 22 heading into the second half. Let's take a look at the highlights from the opening 20 minutes. This is Furman swarming to the basketball, Mr. Fanta, doing such a good job closing out, creating turnovers, and then they're getting out and running and creating offense. But it's been all Furman all the time, and whenever they're out and running, they're really difficult to guard, John. The Paladins firing on all cylinders. 16 for 24 in the first half. They forced seven Stephen F. Austin turnovers. Jalen Slauson was fantastic. He really was, and he showed the versatility of his game, whether it's hitting guys on backdoor cuts, flushing at home, if you will. And he's an offensive rebounder, too. Up, up, and away. Jalen Slauson has been fantastic all game long. Jalen Slauson is big time. That he is. He is big that time is. above the rim from a versatility standpoint. You've talked with scouts about him, and I think today we're seeing firsthand why people are intrigued by his professional potential. Well, it's everything. Oh, back door for a jam right on the hopper to Vanderwall. How about right out of the half, setting up your freshman for a flush? And he has that type of athleticism. Gosh, clicking on all cylinders right now, John. And what did Bob Ritchie tell Rob at halftime? We got to play even harder in the final 20. 10 on the timer. Kajust. They need it. And he's that guy, right? Kajust, the game winner last time out for SFA. This time, he's going to have to get hot in a hurry. Just one of eight from three. And here's the other thing. When you're not shooting the ball well, what's that do to your press? Well, it's tough to get out and <laughs> you got to make shots in order to set up your press, right? So you see Stephen F. Austin right out of the gate. Another back door. Good help side by Stephen F. Austin. Numbers here. Hawkins gliding. He can't score it. Here's Bothwell. To the corner. Pegues. This is more the pace, though, that Lumberjacks would like. Hawkins was left alone. And there has been a lid on the bucket from deep. Jostle nails it. And he removed that lid. Stephen F. Austin hit 1-3 in the first half. They've got two in the first 90 seconds of the second. This is when it helps to have a five-man like Slauson or a four-man like Slauson. He's a bit of a pressure relief when you're facing this kind a full denial defense. Vanderwall will head to the line. And you see the constant cutting action by Furman. They're not chasing the ball or going over the top or crowding the basketball. They're getting away. And Vanderwall, you see it, attacks the closeout, able to get up. Hawkins half step late, almost with the and one. I keep thinking about that hot chicken slider that I just had. <laughs> I'm picking it out of my teeth. Unbelievable. The hospitality here at the well. At the well. That's where we are. Bon Secours Wellness Arena. First ever Greenville Winter Invitational. In game one today, East Carolina beat South Carolina. This is game two of a triple header. Coming up tonight, it's Richmond and Clemson in what should be a great game. Two well-coached ball teams. Clemson's going to have to play well and rebound. And a foul is called on Slauson. From a loss with Loyola Chicago and Atlanta. A nice entry pass. Help side's a little bit late. If you're J.P. Pegues, that's something you have to get that steal. If not, you need to get and square up the offensive player or else you're just vulnerable for an open shot or a foul. 
Call that on the floor. <laughs> Into Hall. And one. And Stephen F. Austin, they're going to battle, right? How about Hall? The and one. Off the baseline, out of bounds. Garrett Heen loses sight. And one, sir. That looked like a lot of ball, if you ask me. It did, but Day Day Hall goes to the line for a three point play. How about the fact that he's playing with a torn labrum in his left shoulder? He's playing through it. He's such a fighter. He's got shoulder straps on his left shoulder, as you just saw. And he's just got that knack for scoring the basketball for the Lumberjacks. To the corner, it's Lawson. Lumberjacks are much more active on the defensive end, and they get the basketball back, forcing an 11 turnover. And that's turning into an issue here in the early going. Stephen F. Austin knocking down some shots. Their bench is active, the players are active. There's no give up in this team, and they're shorthanded. Nine unanswered in just a minute and 45 seconds. We told you folks when this game was 22, it could change. Good call. And now a foul on the Paladins. Good call. There needs to be better communication. J.P. Pegues trying to switch it, just grabs a hold of the offense. Good away from the ball call by the referee. All of a sudden. They did slow it down a little bit. I mean, Furman getting a little hurried up for the first time this game offensively. And Stephen F. Austin, they're prone to runs. All of a sudden, the tone of this game has changed, and it's happened rather quickly. Day Day Hall on the back down. 10 on the timer. Kajust, he can fill it up. Wow. Skip pass to the corner, it's Jostle. Here come the Lumberjacks. How about that? The baseline penetration brings the help side over. Excellent pass. And if there's one guy who can knock it down at a high rate, Mr. Jostle. What a turn. Slauson. Feeds it off, that three short. And Stephen F. Austin has a chance to get within 10, if not single digits. They were down by 22. Wow. Here's Hall. He's the leader of this team that's emerging. Kajus took a bump, and he's got a pair of freebies. Big time shot, you got baseline penetration. That guy has to slide over. Kajus shaking and baking. Finding the guy in the opposite corner, Jostle. 65% of his shots come from beyond the arc. And his bench is juiced. Big time shot. The pass from Kajus and the bench is juiced. Well done. Thank you, sir. I'll take it. <laughs> Kajus is a transfer from Indian River State College. And Kyle Keller brought that up with us with a guy like Kajust. He's only been around for basically a semester. He hasn't been around the program long, but they're asking him to do a lot to you. And you're having to learn a system. And Coach Keller talked about it. It's not just an offensive system you have to figure out. It's how we play defense. Not a lot of people get up in the passing lanes like the Lumberjacks do. It's an adjustment on both sides of the ball, and he's adapted well. Look, as much as they've been shorthanded, They've still scored the basketball well, averaging close to 80 points per game. Seven guys with eight and a half points per game or more, and now they're creeping back into it. Paladins need a bucket. Piggies. Here come the Lumberjacks. Kajus to the hoop! Wow! That's that blinding speed that he showed off in that game winner. We're going to have a timeout. Furman, they need one. Single digit ball game. The Lumberjacks are chopping wood. Stephen F. Austin is back in it. And in our first ever game broadcast on the field of 68, the drama is happening. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is that for me? How? Oh, can't wait to see what you got your mother. <laughs> the BMW Road Home Sales Event. On now. Receive a credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through January 3rd. Health.
Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com to make an appointment. It's boat time. This is Larry. And this is the big, bold, hand-breaded Bose chicken sandwich. Larry knew he couldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, he is a chicken after all. But Larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich. And before he knew it, his little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender. Even a chicken wants to eat it. Why do people are trying to eat? Tonight and every night, live at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the Field of 68 YouTube channel, it's Field of 68 After Dark. And on this evening's show, the guys will break down all five ranked versus ranked games in college basketball across the country. How Kansas rolled past Indiana, a thriller between Ohio State and North Carolina. Kentucky and UCLA in action in a crucial test for both. And the debut of Tyler Hansborough. That's right, the former National Player of the Year, arguably the best college hoops player in the last two decades. North Carolina pride Tyler Hansborough joining Jeff Goodman, Matt McCall, and Greg Waddell tonight on Field of 68 After Dark, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. Hop in the chat, subscribe, and join us for the fun. John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby, we're having fun. And so are the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks, who were once down big, a corner three is off. They've gotten within single digits. How have they done it? Well, it's a cumulative effect. And that's a charge, Mr. Bothwell. Good job, Mr. Nigel Hawkins getting back in front of the basketball, taking a lick is what my high school coach used to say. Getting out in front of the ball. And it's, it's a cumulative effect when playing the um, Lumberjacks. Folks, Furman opened up the second half with a dunk. They haven't scored since. Stephen F. Austin's on a 15-0 run. We got a nine-point game. If you're looking for the right school, Look beyond the numbers. You'll find a university that's ready to welcome you with open arms. You'll find SFA. Opportunity is always in bloom. You'll get to perform research alongside faculty members. And we never miss a chance to show off our lumberjack spirit! Woo! SFA is committed to providing truly transformational experiences. Oh, and one more thing. Ask some Jack. Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the Field of 68. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright. Come in now and choose from a great selection of new Ford trucks and SUVs in stock and ready for delivery. Or place a custom order on select vehicles, lock in your rate, and you're protected. Plus, new inventory is arriving daily, so you can drive one home for the holidays. Lock in this low rate, plus make no payments for up to 90 days on a new 2022 Ford F-150. Choose from 6,000 trucks and SUVs, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Stephen F. Austin, out of the whack, has gotten back into it in the inaugural Greenville Winter Invitational. The Lumberjacks, once down 22, are within nine. We told you at the outset, folks, two things. Number one, Stephen F. Austin leads college basketball, forcing 21 and a half turnovers per game. Number two, Stephen F. Austin is 54th in the country in Ken Palm adjusted tempo. The moral of the story, if they could click, things could happen. And Terrence Oglesby, that's what we're watching. That's exactly right. There's a cumulative effect because they never stop playing hard. And that's half the battle, right? Five turnovers in the second half has spearheaded their run to get back in this ballgame. 
Kajust. Kajust is leading the Lumberjacks back. He is shifty. Mr. Phantom, a little left to right. The end one finish. Forget offense. We'll just go left to right. I'm going to finish over the top. Nice job attacking Huey's body. Holding that ball on the outside. Little left, little right. A little finish. That's an and one. A Juco transfer. How many times, though, do you see a guy hit a game winner like he did against Louisiana Tech earlier this week in the Lumberjacks? Thrilling win. He commits a foul this time. And then that springs into the rest of your season when you have that momentum boosting, confidence boosting clutch moment. That's exactly what it is. It's a confidence boosting moment. And it kind of unleashes himself in his first season with a new program. And you see how comfortable he is with the ball. Maybe early in the season, he isn't making that happen. It's a 17-0 Stephen F. Austin run. Over the last four minutes, too. 17 to nothing Lumberjacks. This is the guy that needs to make something happen for Furman. Mike Bothwell. Pass picked off by Pegues. He is fouled. I'm not quite sure what J.P. Pegues did. It's 17-2 in the second half. Lumberjacks just continue to force turnovers. And it goes back. They're trying to move the ball a little too much. Now, if that double team doesn't come and you're Mike Bothwell, you're posted up against an opposing guard. You need to make something happen. That's where that 19.7 points per game are tremendously valuable. Make something happen on your own. Double team's coming a little late. Derek Tezano to the line. He's back in the lineup, has been dealing with an injury, and has returned today, making an impact in nine minutes played. And yet again, folks, this is big now. Not only has Stephen F. Austin gotten back into the game, Furman is in the penalty with 17 fouls in four minutes and 55 seconds. Free throws from here on out for the Lumberjacks. And oftentimes, the more aggressive team is not the team in foul trouble. You have to embrace that physicality if you're Furman. Gosh, they're everywhere right now, John. One of the nation's top defensive teams year in and year out. A blocking foul is called on Jostle. Stephen F. Austin is into this basketball game. Their bench has been going crazy. And the energy has maintained even when they got down a sizable lead or a sizable deficit. Somebody needs to make something happen individually. They're cutting off the passing lanes. They can't get rid of the basketball. It makes it exceedingly difficult to move it. Pegues dishes it off. That three doesn't go. Bothwell was getting hung. He was getting hold, held on to there, going for the rebound and a call on the Lumberjacks. And that's way, that's another way to kind of cut into a run by the opposing team. Make those extra effort plays, right? Mike Bothwell, that fifth year senior, Jalen Slauson, that fifth year senior, those guys need to step up for you right now. This is where you saw the halftime feature here. Furman believes they're better because of a moment like last year's heartbreak in the SOCON tournament. These are the types of moments you can show your medal. Ten on the timer for Bothwell. And Stephen F. Austin, so good, swarming to the ball. Slauson, it's a kick ball. And everyone on the Lumberjacks bench is standing. Everyone, uh, it's complete engagement. One through 15 for the Lumberjacks. And they just make everything difficult. Every pass is difficult. And like we said, it's just the entire game. It never stops. They come at you in waves. Now, this is an interesting substitution. Because Antwi Bosiaco, he presents an opportunity for Furman to use ball screens because he's not as good compared mm -hmm. to other players as far as switches are concerned. Sloss into Bothwell. There's the duo for the Paladins. The combo, Furman needs to get a stop to slow this run. Get some momentum. Now the crowd getting into this one in Greenville. Fun one at the well. Jostle surveying. Kajust with eight on the shot clock. Isn't it amazing off a made basket? What's happened? Set defense. That's when it's tough, but Jostle doesn't care. 
He's long, offensive rebound. What will they do with it? They've got 11 of those today. Could you somehow kept his handle? Back door left open. That doesn't go. Scramble for it, and a foul is called. Two offensive rebounds. Whenever you're trying to stop a run, you have to finish possessions. Stephen, S. Stephen F. Austin coming at you in waves. Nigel Hawkins just continues to find ways to be effective. But it's all been Jostle. Latrell Jostle, Kansas transfer, excellent shooter. Been terrific on the season at over 50% from beyond the arc. Tyree Chewy's had trouble staying in this game, Terrence. He's got four fouls now. And a lot of that comes from having to switch over into help side and then not boxing out, right? If you're not boxing out and taking care of your work early, you're susceptible to them getting offensive rebound, going straight up, and then you're trying to recover into position. You have to be alert the entire possession. Listen to me talking about defense, Fanta. I know, it's... It's kind of crazy. It's right. You're like putting me in a salad bar. <laughs> that hasn't happened in Greenville. That's the only green thing about this town. <laughs> is the name. And I love it. There you go. As a result, I can live here. Bothwell attacking. And that's where it goes back to bringing that five man out who's not as fleet of foot and using that ball screen and using your quickness to get around, that's how you can take advantage of some matchups. Where Furman was having trouble is when Stephen F. Austin was five small and switching everything. Hawkins flying high! Oh. And a technical foul! Let the kid live. Oh. Let that's, the kid live. I'm sorry, that's terrible. But what a move, going baseline. The sweep and go. Look at this, the flush. Up, up and away. Why is that a technical foul? I don't know, it doesn't really have anything to do with the game. Let the kid have fun. You go up, your team's making a run. It's an emotional game, John. He's celebrating the moment. Kyle Keller's not talking to the official about his Christmas list. <laughs> that, that's one of those that just... So the, the official explanation is that it, it was because he did a chin up on the rim. Sidney Cohen, Jerome Hall, Bruce Benedict is our officiating crew today. And Kyle Keller is still letting them hear about it here because that's, that's by big. the letter of the law. By yes. the letter of the law, but still. We at the field of 68 do not condone such, such technical foul calls. Back over to Rob. Hawkins before this season had the opportunity to uh, to opt out and transfer and, and, and use that extra year that he had. And he decided to come back. And he wasn't playing his best at the start of the season. And one of the things that Kyle Keller told us uh, when we talked with him earlier was he had to play with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more swagger. And, you know, I know he got a technical foul on that, but a player that's playing like that, that's what you want to see out of Nigel Hawkins. That's when he's at his best. Suffered a fibia injury last year. He has a rod in his leg. And he looked himself in the mirror earlier this season and said, you know what, I got to take accountability. I have to be a better leader for my team. And that has ended up reverberating around the locker room. His leadership and his accountability to say, I'm not doing enough for my team. That's exactly right. In the first three games of the season, zero points. Second game, zero points. Third game, six points. And a 25-point explosion after that talk with Kyle Keller. And even after the technical foul, there wasn't a word said to him. You ever look yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself? Where, what are we getting at here, John? <laughs> Self-evaluation, right? Yeah. I'm guessing you're not as crazy as I am. Well, I mean, you got to be your own biggest fan, I guess, right? The turn for Hall. Wow, what a pass. Top of the key for Jostle. Latrell Jostle. When he's in catch and shoot situations, you can forget about it. 53% on the year, and that was a heck of a pass by Day Day. Whew, hard screen. That's long, and here come the Lumberjacks. Jostle with numbers. Jostle's going for the alley-oop! Oh, my! Balasiaco! What a flush, and we're off and running. Stephen F. Austin turning the heat up a little bit in front of Furman's home crowd. 
These two teams are putting on a show on the field of 68. Need it. Short. Slauson! Wow. <laughs> It's a, he go? it's a show of athletes, this game. Alley-oop on one end and a big-time finish or put back by Slauson. And Stephen F. Austin is off and running, creating the turnover. Mid-major, forget about it. <laughs> These two teams are raising their games to another level. Unbelievable. It goes up. Antoine Bosiaco throws it down. Furman has transformed the educational experience to be different, to have a distinct and purposeful pathway of opportunity, access, and resources. It's the opportunity to engage in real-world, hands-on experiences, such as study away, research, and internships. It's access to world-class faculty and four impactful institutes. It's the resources available to help you understand your strengths and how they fit into the world. It's the deep sense of community surrounded by pure beauty. Furman sets the foundation for your life. Find your advantage at Furman. With dozens of outstanding hotels, hundreds of mouth-watering restaurants, and thousands of people who will genuinely be happy to see you, here you go. It's no wonder that even in winter, Greenville, South Carolina, is one of the warmest places in the world. Come savor the sights, the sounds, and the smiles of Greenville. Come visit this winter. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? A multifaceted stone of remarkable strength, formed under intense pressure to shine brighter than all the rest. Hard edges, clean lines, with a fire inside. When you look at a diamond, what do you see? Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. The Field of 68 Media Network has so many ways that you can follow college basketball. In fact, every single morning, Mike Miller and his crew, they bring you the Field of 68 newsletter. It's the Field of 68 Daily. You can check it out every morning in your inbox. Subscribe to the newsletter sent out every morning. It's the Daily, folks, and it's the best way to catch up on college basketball. And a shout out to Mike Miller for everything he's done with the Daily. It is what complements my coffee every single sunrise. John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby, Rob Doster back here with you. We are at the Greenville Winter Invitational. Furman 55, Stephen F. Austin 48. The plot thickens after Stephen F. Austin was down 22 at halftime and outscored Furman 26 to 11 in the second half. A turnover, and it'll go back to the Paladins. Let's we'll send it back over to Rob. Yeah, John, I was there. I was listening to the huddle that Kyle Keller was uh, talking to his teammates and his mess or the, his players, and his message was basically keep working, keep grinding. You can tell the effort and the intensity that this team is playing with. I haven't seen a single possession at the other end of the floor from where I'm sitting because my view is completely blocked by these guys standing <laughs> up. And I'll, and I'll tell you this much. I know that they're they're beat up with injuries and they're down a few people. They were really uh, breathing hard in that hole, drinking a lot of water. Back to you, John. <laughs> that was the best sideline report I've ever listened to in my life. And that man is who Robbie Hummel refers to as God's gift to sideline reporting. A rejection by Hall. That entry just a little bit too much mustard on And that's tough. Jostle trying to make that pass from too far out. And if you're going to make an over-the-top pass, you either want to be directly on the top of the key or on the sideline. Joe Anderson coming over a little bit too late, but regardless, overshot the pass. We look for a 1-5 action. Antwa Bosiaco now guarding Jalen Slauson. That's where Bothwell needs to attack. Bothwell, fifth-year senior, looking for Slauson. It was picked off. Lumberjacks with numbers. Here's Hall, dishing it off. The unselfishness pays off to Hawkins. That's a second-level read that needs to happen if you're Mike Bothwell. It's the opposite corner. Stephen F. Austin coming over really far on help side, getting that steal. It's the opposite corner that's open. 13 
for Nigel Hawkins. Back door for Vanderwall. He's looking for Slauson. Lumberjacks are all over it defensively. What a comeback. What? Jostle. Whoa. Jostle's got a dozen. This was a 22-point game, and now it's a two-point game. What a pass. Everybody was looking for the alley-oop to Hawkins, and who's wide open? Mr. Jostle with another one. Four threes here in the second half, John Fanta. The wildest game of the day in college basketball is here in Greenville as Bothwell will go to the line. How about you're out in transition. Everybody thinks the oops come and Jostle running the floor, knocking it down. Kansas transfer one after another four threes here in the second half. And that stroke is pure. When you think about how much this game's done a 180. Wow. It, it's not a, a falsehood or it's not something crazy to you in the way that it's changed. We expected the contrasting styles to meet today. It's just how sharp in difference the two halves have been. With 9.08 to go, what's the remainder of this game come down to? Comes down to who handles the pressure and who imposes their will. Right, Stephen F. Austin, they're creating all these looks in semi breaks or fast break situations. When the Dens have been able to score and set their defense, they've been really good. Whenever they're having to scramble in transition, that's when they're starting to struggle. 31 to 11 so far, make that 31 to 12 in the second half in favor of the Lumberjacks. Just an incredible comeback. The Lumberjacks, Kyle Keller used all four of his timeouts in the first half, folks. It, All four. And now, how many times in a game do you see 9.08 left and there's only one timeout between the two teams? It never happens. Now, I like this call by Bob Ritchie. What are you doing? That's a weak foul call. I don't like that. Now, they're in the bonus. They're going to shoot free throws. But I like the call to extend your pressure out to three-quarter court. So what, it, what does it do? It slows down Stephen F. Austin to a point to where they're going to have to run some half-court offense, and they can't get into that same flow that they've been using over the past, oh, I don't know, 11 minutes? Slow them down, make them think a little bit more, and operate in the half-court. A.J. Kajust has been a revelation in this game. He had the game winner against Louisiana Tech. All you have to do is take a look at his face, folks. The man is putting in work this evening. And his team would prefer to not get on a plane home to Texas without a win. That's the standard for Lumberjacks basketball over the years. It's been Kajust and Jostle. And then now Furman, they put the ball in their best playmaker's hands and say, hey, Mike, we need you to get us one. Bothwell driving. It's a blocking foul. It's the sixth team foul on Stephen F. Austin, their last to give. And that's significant because Stephen F. Austin, with the manner in which they play, pressuring the ball, trying to create turnovers, they get in foul trouble. It limits them a little bit. What a comeback. John Fanta, Terrence Oglesby, Rob Dowster with you. First ever college basketball game broadcast on the field of 68. And if you're a hoop head, which all of you listen and watch us, you're loving what Jalen Slauson has done today. But even, slow, even so, that was a deflected pass. Lumberjacks so close to getting back in this ball game, but Jalen Slauson coming through when you need it most. Kajus got bumped, and they, they do call the foul. Bob Ritchie is irate. And every single foul call results in free throws. I think he's calling for a moving screen out on the top. It's the fourth foul on Pegues. So now Pegues and Huey both have four fouls. And it's funny because... Those are the two players that Bob Ritchie said are the X factors to his team, and they both have been in foul trouble. It's been the Kajus and Jostle show here in the second. We're going to be able to take another look at the foul call. Asking for a little bit of a bump. There's no contact there. Now, I can see where that's a difficult 
thing to call, John, because there's so much congestion. But it's best to just sit on it. A.J. Kajus. He's been terrific. I mean, nothing short of terrific here in the second half. Junior from Boca Raton, Juco transfer, and he is stepping up in a massive way for his team. Back to a three-point game. Wow, every pass is difficult. Every pass being pushed out a little bit further. And another turnover. Relentless are the Lumberjacks. The 18th turnover by Furman. Stephen F. Austin forces over 21 per game, and now Furman's having trouble keeping the Lumberjacks in front. We'll have more free throws to come after our timeout and a chance for Day Day Hall to get his Lumberjacks within one. Do not go anywhere. Our first ever broadcast on the field of 68. It's living up to the hype. Furman has transformed the educational experience to be different, to have a distinct and purposeful pathway of opportunity, access, and resources. It's the opportunity to engage in real-world, hands-on experiences, such as study away, research, and internships. It's access to world-class faculty and four impactful institutes. It's the resources available to help you understand your strengths and how they fit into the world. It's the deep sense of community surrounded by pure beauty. Furman sets the foundation for your life. Find your advantage at Furman. Jewelry has always been the most powerful gift of love, whether it's an engagement or an anniversary. Here at Hales, we're in the business of celebrating your life's most special moments from the past, the present, and the future. Being Greenville's oldest business means we understand you are only as good as how you feel when you leave the store. We welcome you to visit our flagship jewelry store. With dozens of outstanding hotels, hundreds of mouth-watering restaurants, and thousands of people who will genuinely be happy to see you. Here you go. It's no wonder that even in winter, Greenville, South Carolina is one of the warmest places in the world. Come savor the sights, the sounds, and the smiles of Greenville. Come visit this winter. Welcome back, everybody, to the 2022 Greenville Winter Invitational Game 2 of a three-game day. The holiday spirit is alive at the well, and we've got a terrific finish here between Stephen F. Austin and Furman. John Vantatera and so will be Rob Doster back here with you. If you're just joining us, you've missed a lot. At halftime, the score was Furman 44, Stephen F. Austin 22. Since... Lumberjacks 35, Paladins 16. How has this game turned on its head? Relentless pressure by the Lumberjacks. In the second half, Furman struggling to create any dribble penetration, really. And the Lumberjacks just getting out, staying in front. They went small, too. I think that was the big thing, John. And they were switching everything. And whenever Furman wasn't able to create those mismatches and use their quickness to get into the lane, that's when things broke down for them. Furman, 88th in Ken Palm, the front runner in the preseason in the SOCON. Such an offensively efficient team. And that was the challenge at hand that Kyle Keller felt would be a big one because Furman so often dictates the style of their games. But the Lumberjacks, they could have quit. Do you want to know how much of a factor they'll be in the Western Athletic Conference? They've got real toughness. Real toughness and depth once they get healthy. Coach Keller told us the Calvary's coming, right? <laughs> but referring to Bob Ritchie and Furman, he said, this is the first game I've ever prepared for where everything we try to put in these guys' hands, we might not run. This is a game where you have to make plays individually. And in the second half, they haven't been able to. Rob Dowster gets better as the game goes on. What's up, Bobby Dean? 
So Day Day Hall, who's shooting these free throws here, is a really interesting story. He's a local kid. He's from Sulphur Spring, Texas, which is about two hours from Nagadoches. Uh, and he was recruited by Stephen F. Austin, but he wasn't offered a scholarship by Stephen F. Austin coming out of high school. He ended up going to East Tennessee State. Uh, and after Jason Shea was fired there, he transferred back to Stephen F. Austin. And one of, uh, one of Kyle Keller's philosophies, he says, when guys want to come play for us, they usually are really successful because you have to be wired a certain way to play for them. We've seen that this year uh, out of Day Day Hall. And T.O., one other note, you mentioned that uh, he's put on 20 pounds of weight so far um, during the offseason. Well, part of the reason is he ate six meals a day during the summer, and uh, I think he would fit in very well with the field of 68 crew. <laughs> so far, he has. The Lumberjacks going for the time and time this game. Josel does it. How about getting his feet set? Coming off a double screen. Able to knock it through. They haven't led since it was five to three. To the corner. It's long and a chance to take their first lead since not even three minutes into the game after being down by 24. Unbelievable display by the Lumberjacks. Jocelyn and Kajust have combined for 26. Day Day Hall, Slauson shut him down. Another deflection. It just disrupts everything Furman wants to do offensively. They can't move the ball and they just swarm. They attack defensive aggressiveness. Slauson kicks. Now Bothwell's got it with eight. Now here's Bothwell the problem. is big time. Here's the problem. You switch, you gain no advantage. That's a matchup issue. If you're Mike Bothwell, you have to dictate the offense a little bit. Find the opposing five man and use his man as the screener. That was a like-like switch, guard to guard, and they're able to stay in front. Heyman taking the charge. The largest NCAA comeback is from Drexel about five years ago. They trailed by 34 in a game. Wow. Stephen F. Austin was down 24 points. Unbelievable that they have a chance to take the lead in Greenville. Jostle, he's been terrific in this comeback. Kajust has been the motor. Extra pass. Hawkins. Now Kajust with 10. They turn it over. Good defensive possession, though. They're closing out. You're getting to the right spots. Kajust getting a little too deep. But at the same time, now you can set your offense a little bit. Isn't this the beauty of these two teams getting together? We heard at the half, both coaches, Bob Ritchie, Kyle Keller, saying we need to play these types of games. This is what college basketball is about for these programs. Absolutely. Two mid-major squads getting absolute, absolutely tested before they go into conference play. They'll be better for it. To the corner. That's short. Boasioko with the rebound and another chance for Stephen F. Austin to take their first lead since there was 17-15 to go in the first half. Jostle, a little bit long. Extra opportunity. Their 14th offensive rebound. You have to finish possessions against the Lumberjacks in order to have success. A turnover. Now you need to go. You have numbers if you run and look up. Here's Slauson. You know what's also beautiful, folks? Only one timeout left between the two teams. It belongs to Furman. We're not going to have a lot of stoppages. Skip pass to the corner. Foster with 10. Extra pass. It's Huey. An air ball. Shot clock's at three. Slauson's been the star. Slauson is short. Huey can't hit. And yet another opportunity for those Lumberjacks. They've been chopping and chopping their way back. Can they take the lead? A roll reversal. First half to second half. Second half here. Stephen F. Austin, 5 of 7 from 3, and Furman can't buy one. Kajust floats it up 
a wild shot, and here comes Bothwell. Bothwell was fouled. He was pushed, and that sends the Lumberjacks into the penalty. And that's when Furman's had success. Right, John? Getting a rebound, taking off, that's when you have numbers. And because Stephen F. Austin attacks the offensive glass, the floor is tilted. And if you're able to advance that ball quickly, you can find open shots. The last two possessions, Furman has found open shots, just not able to knock them through. And it's hurt them so far in the second half. This is who you'd like at the line if you're Furman. Mike Bothwell is an 81% free throw shooter, a one and one. Bothwell, 10 points here in the second half. He's been Mr. Dependable for the most part, but turnovers just continue to be an issue for Furman. The pride of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. He's got that toughness factor that they love, and he just gave his Paladins the lead back. 62-60, down the stretch we come in Greenville. What a terrific basketball game. Lawson defending. Hawkins is stuck. Hawkins just got rid of it in time. Now seven on the timer. Heyman. Heyman, that's double dribble. And a timeout. The Dens will have the ball after we step away. It's the first ever game broadcast on the field of 68. And you just had to know that we would have a thrilling finish. Furman, Stephen F. Austin, Dins and Lumberjacks. Don't go anywhere. This is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is that for me? How? Oh, I can't wait to see what you got your mother. <laughs> the BMW Road Home Sales Event. On now. Receive a credit of up to $3,250 on select models now through January 3rd. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. The Paladins trying to stave off this huge effort by Stephen F. Austin, but they're ranked 20th in the College Insider Mid-Major Top 25. A team with a lot of weapons, John Fanta, Jalen Slauson, Mike Bothwell, but they have their hands full here at the well in Greenville, South Carolina. Lumberjacks here in the second half have been absolutely terrific, knocking down shots, creating turnovers. They're going to have to lean on their seniors, though, John. And you can check out the Field of 68 mid-major show with Sean Paul and Rocco Miller. They did it yesterday. It is a great watch on the Field of 68. Sean Paul does the weekly Field of 68 mid-major poll, led currently by... FAU, Florida Atlantic College of Charleston at two, UAB at three. Here we go, folks. Less than four to go in Greenville. The Paladins up two, looking for some cushion. Pick ease. Bothwell with 10. Bothwell. He's regarded as the leader. Bothwell just showed us why he'll go in the line for two. And even when your offense break downs, have, breaks down, how about having a guy like Mike Bothwell just put it in his hands and let him go to work, create something. 
for your offense. And he's very left-hand dominant. But at the same time, if he gets to that left hand, he's so strong physically that he's able to hold off the defense. Bob Dobster was sitting in on Furman's huddle. What'd you hear? I heard a lot about just trying to stay calm and trying to uh, avoid getting sped up by this Stephen F. A., uh, Stephen F. Austin uh, defense. Bothwell was the most vocal in the huddle. One thing to keep an eye on, guys, I don't know if you've noticed it, but uh, Slauson has been, looked like he was favoring his right ankle or his right foot in that huddle. Um, he was stretching it out. He retied his shoes uh, during the timeout. On the floor for the Lumberjacks, Hawkins Hall, Jostle Kajus, Antwi Palasiaco. For Furman, it's Pegues, Bothwell, Vanderwall, Heen, and Slauson. Lumberjacks in need of a bucket, now down four. Just need to be solid. Position defense, don't foul. Maintain your verticality. They've struggled in the half court, John Fanta. Kajus. Off to Jostle. He oh. hit it from Texas! <laughs> How about that? Solid defensive possession all the way through. Trout, Jostle, making it happen. A 53% three-point shooter, folks. Off to Vanderwall. Rebound to the Lumberjacks and a chance to get the lead back. Good offensive possession. The ball changes sides of the floor. You get a quality look. Those could be the difference maker. Off the fake, Day Day Hall. Jostle, heat check. Oh! Latrell Jostle is in his bag in Greenville. He's hitting everything. John Fanta, one after another, forcing Bob Ritchie to take his last timeout. Latrell Jostle different here in Greenville. And it's a solid ball movement. Timeout Furman, it's their last. Just solid ball movement, losing track of your man. You can't leave that guy open. Jostle all over the place, and you have to stay disciplined defensively, and you cannot leave that young man open. The follow through, the rotation, the bucket. Kyle Keller told us, look, oh, wow. we're undersized with the injuries this year, but guess what? We've been hitting more threes, and that's allowed for us to find a different dimension. Well, I'd say Latrell Jostle is a 57, rather 53% three-point shooter, folks. He leads the team. He came into this game 17 for 32 from downtown, and today he's six for 11. And T.O., when you're down by 22, you got to have somebody get hot. And boy, has he ever gotten hot. Seven to nine in the second half from the field, six of eight from three. Just creating, they're creating easy looks for him. He's much more efficient without the ball in his hands. Playing off the catch and knocking down shots. Game reset here, folks. Neither team has a timeout left. Stephen F. Austin is in the single penalty, so there's still one more one and one for Furman. Furman's in the double penalty, so Stephen F. Austin has two free throws from here on out. It is Furman basketball off the timeout. Possession arrow, which could be important in a game that's been this intense, is with the Lumberjacks. Again, neither team has a timeout. That's not a common thread in college basketball these days. We're going to see pure hoops. It certainly is. It is going to be dictated by the players, and isn't that exactly what we want, John? Bothwell with a head of steam. A foul was called. And Bob Ritchie is furious. He thought for a second that was going to go uncalled. And he needs to be careful right now. I understand the emotion. You need to be careful. You're down two. You have your, one of your best free throw shooters at the line. You cannot give up points at this point in the game in a tight contest. That's the third foul on Hall. This has turned into a tremendous basketball game. And we were doubtful at halftime. It was a 22-point game at the half. A 22-point game. But Stephen F. Austin, after only hitting one three in the first 20 minutes, hitting seven in the second half, forcing 19 turnovers. We're tied at 66 with two minutes to go on the field of 68. Kajus gliding in. The foul was called on the 
the floor. It doesn't matter, though, because it will be two free throws. And that was tough. I thought they were going to get Antoine Bo Bosiaco on a moving screen. But regardless, the Lumberjacks staying aggressive. Look at how Antoine Bosiaco seals off. That's a moving screen, John Fanta. They missed that call. But regardless, Kajust staying aggressive. This second half, uh, he's been terrific. Creating off the bounce, creating for his teammates. Coach Keller said he's still learning a lot. He's still learning. The game is slowing down for him. And boy, has it ever in the second half today. Kajust just a 68% free throw shooter hitting on the first six of eight from the line today as you said it's really been jostle with 20 in this second half Kajust with 13 as he misses the second Slauson's got it again no timeouts for either side both teams in the double penalty Slauson he's unstoppable but he just couldn't put the dunk down wow that's what you gotta have the defense breaks down and now SFA's off and running. Tough shot and it falls for Kajus. He is unbelievable in the open floor and so strong when getting to the rack. Big time finish. 18 for Kajus, 20 for Jostle. It's Stephen F. Austin's largest lead of the day and it comes at three points with over a minute left. Now Slauson, that's deflected. There's eight on the shot clock. Bothwell is fouled. He's fouled by Hawkins. And Bothwell was going to get on the floor for that ball. Hawkins jumps on his back leg. And poor Fanta. That is He's having heart palpitations over here, Rob. Well, that's the last thing you can do there. There were seven on the shot clock, T.O. That's right. Let that clock play out. Hawkins play position defense. Ball gets loose, deflected, excellent awareness. That ball goes out. Mm. I, I mean, you love the hustle. It, it's hard to get on a kid for showing that type of hustle, right? But at the same time, time and score, right? Now you're giving Furman a chance to stop the clock and still score. Mike Bothwell has 31 points on 10 of 10 from the floor. Unbelievable. His career high is 32. He just matched it. And we have a one point game in Greenville. Get ready, folks. Drama on the field of 68. This is what we signed up for in Greenville. Kyle Keller saying, hey guys, back up. I'm going to let my dude be a dude. It's in Kajus' hands. He's going to make something happen. The Juco transfer. Kajus. AJ Kajus has been that dude. Kajus with three. Kajus feeds it off. Hawkins to beat the buzzer. Whoa! The bank is open on a Saturday night. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins with a bank. Lumberjacks got Christmas bonuses. <laughs> How about that? We're going to have to take another look at that. John Fanta. Goodness me. Two. One. I don't know if it's going to count or not. Does he get it off? Yes. Ooh, wow. Really, really close. We're going to take another look here. No, I don't know. I thought it was still in his hands. That is awfully close. <laughs> wow. Ooh. He didn't get it off. What a turn of events. <laughs> That's bang bang, folks. Wow. That's hard, T.L. You're saying he didn't get it off. I don't think so. I, don't, I think it was still in his hands. He was in the process of releasing the ball. Rob Doster, he might have had a better look of it. It's got to be indisputable evidence. Again. Wow. It's a game by inches, oh, folks. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. That's about as close as it gets. Here they come. Here's the call. What an unbelievable game. Our crew, Sidney Cohen, Jerome Hall, and Bruce Benedict. This is quite a decision. And are they going back to the monitor? They're going to take another look at it. For those staying for the Clemson game, the referee with the ball is P.J. Hall's father. 
I don't know if people know that. Clemson's P.J. Hall, that's his father. But wow, are we going to count it? Shot clock oh violation. Oh my goodness! A shot clock violation! Wow. It really is a game of inches. <laughs> Unbelievable. And so take that off the board. It's 69, 68, and Kyle Keller. <laughs> Neither coach has liked the officials tonight. He begs to differ. Wow. Unbelievable. This has right. turned into a barn burner, sir. Let's reset this game for you. That did give the teams a free timeout, but there are no timeouts left for either team. Both teams are in the double bonus. The possession arrows with the Lumberjacks. So Terrence Oglesby, you've got a 10 second difference between shot and game. If you're Bob Ritchie, you've got Mike Bothwell with 32 points and Jalen Slauson with 16. You're going to Mike Bothwell because he's the guy that can create off the bounce with consistency. Set up an action to get him to his left hand and attack the rim. What a basketball game. Honestly, and, and no, not one for hyperbole here. We've, we've caught a lot of games this season. In terms of the wildness meter, this takes the cake. We should have known. Electric. Here we go. Have to have a creative way to get Mike Bothwell the basketball. They got him the ball. He has been the star. Bothwell fades. Mike he does it. Bothwell, 34 points, and he gives the Dins the lead. He has been an absolute stud. No timeouts for the Lumberjacks. Here's Kajust. Kajust driving, faking. They call timeout, John. They call timeout. Neither team has any timeouts. According to our count and according to the scoreboard, neither team has a timeout. So they'll sort things out here. What a move. Mike Bothwell up and over. Wow. A clutch shot. We're trying to find out exactly what happened. Well, the officials are debating right now, folks. If it there was, was a foul or a timeout. A foul or a timeout. And if it's a timeout, that's a technical. You look nice move, Kajust. Really congested. Bothwell gets on the floor. I don't see a timeout. I don't see where anybody called the timeout. Hmm. So we're going to need some clarification, hopefully in a moment. So now let's see. Let's send it over to Rob Doster. That happened right in front of me, about 15 feet in front of me. And I can tell you that nobody on the Furman team called a timeout. At least it did not look like it to me. And it wow. did not look like they were saying anything. Wow. And they gave them a technical foul. So here we are going to have an official explanation at the table here. Okay. Wait, close time. So, it's a Class B technical foul. Jostle's going to go in the line, but here's the crazy thing about everything. Because it's Class B, it's just the one shot for Jostle. Furman will have the basketball. So, an opportunity to tie for Jostle. Furman gets the last possession, and it's only fitting on the first game on the field of 68 Media Network. That was Jostle's sixth free throw attempt of the entire season. He hasn't missed. We're tied at 70. And Furman will have the basketball going for the win. Four flat. Let Mike Bothwell go. The Furman Paladins lost the SoCon final last year on a buzzer beater. They believe they're better for it. We could find out the answer to that right here. Bothwell has a career-high 34. Mike Bothwell. Mike Bothwell for the win. Oh! Christmas came early. Mike Bothwell and Furman have sent Greenville into a frenzy. As time 
expires. The officials are checking how much time was on the clock. Mike Bothwell, a little in and out. Get to the baseline, your spot, and let it rip. That could be the game winner, John Fanta. My, my, my. Big time players make big time plays in big time situations. And that is what Mike Bothwell is. Holy moly, what a game. Mike Bothwell is the pride of Cleveland. He has come to this program, and what did Bob Ritchie tell us? I want guys from Ohio and Tennessee. They produce winners. Mike Bothwell is the epitome of a winner. And you think Thurman was ready for a late game situation? This is a ridiculous, a ridiculous line for Mike Bothwell, a career high 36. What better time going right into Christmas break being the dude on a really good Furman team, putting the team on his back. He was a finalist last year for the Lou Henson Mid-Major Player of the Year and the fifth-year guard. Here's Stephen F. Austin's inbounds. The pass down the court, it was deflected. Kyle Keller's already walking to Bob Ritchie. Furman wins! What a game, both teams, as they swore Mike Bothwell, close to us. Mike Bothwell would not be denied tonight. And the Dins are a winner in Greenville in a classic on the field of 68. What a performance. Mike Bothwell, one for the ages, John Fanta. Unbelievably efficient, able to get to the line, putting the team on his back against a Lumberjack team that just had zero quit in their DNA. Terrence, yesterday I asked Bob Ritchie the question. Mike Bothwell, does he have toughness? And Richie started laughing. <laughs> Rob Douster is with Mike Bothwell. Mike, talk to me about that last shot. What'd you see? I just got to give glory and honor to uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. I just talked to him throughout the game. I just tried to be able to be there for my team. You know, everything was going bad for us. We just had to hang on. That's a great team, man. I just tried to make a play for my team. And I'm glad we were able to get out here with a win, man. Career high 36 points. What did you get going tonight against this team? I just I just tried to will, will, us, will us through. You know, we were having a lot of things go wrong for us in that second half. I just tried to will us through. You know, we had to make plays. They were pressuring us. I just had to be the player that I am and, and be the leader that I am. And tonight, that man scored. Other nights, he's going to mean get assists, get, make, make plays for others. But I just tried to be the player for my team. You guys are undefeated on the field of 68 Media Network. When are we coming back? Y'all can come back anytime y'all want. We all welcome to Greenville, whatever. We want to know, so we make it going on throughout the years. Congratulations on the women. Thank you. Thank you. A master class from Mike Bothwell. Hands in the air as they should be. 36 points from the fifth year senior, 12 of 14 from the floor, 11 of 11 from the line, and the field of 68 media networks game broadcast debut was outstanding in every way. For Rob Douster, for Terrence Oglesby, I'm John Fanta saying thank you for watching a thriller. Furman 72, Stephen F. Austin 70, a wild one. Ha, ha, ha.